Hi, I'm Marn. Welcome back to my channel, Marn Makes It. Today I wanted to make a follow-up video to my original Trusted House Sitters video. So I made a video explaining how Trusted House Sitters works as a site. I got a lot of questions and comments on that video, and I've also gotten a lot of questions in my own personal life about how all this works. So today I wanted to make a follow-up video and answer my top questions that I get asked about Trusted House Sitters in a sort of rapid fire question format. I have my laptop on my lap, so if you see me look down, I'm just looking at my laptop to make sure I don't forget any of the questions or any of the information that I want to make sure to tell you guys. So the first question I get asked all the time about house sitting and how I do that as opposed to having a lease is how do I find the house sits? The answer to that, very quick, website that also has an app version of it called Trusted House Sitters. That's kind of what I went over in my first video that I made already on this. Second question is how hard is it actually to get one of these houses? So let's say you join the app, you're on the app, you make a profile, you go through that whole process. Now, how hard is it actually to secure yourself one of these house sitting jobs? I'm gonna say it depends. Honestly, there's a huge shift of supply demand depending on the location that you're in, the length of time that you're wanting to do this for, for example, there's a lot more very short-term house sits posted compared to very long-term ones. So I found that the long-term ones are more competitive usually than the short-term ones. Also things that are further out are more competitive than things that are more last minute. If you're willing to be more flexible, you do generally have more choices that way. This is also true for location. So I think location plays a huge role here. So Trusted House Sitters is originally a website from the UK. So I am wondering if it's easier to do this in the UK because more people know about the app, so more people are posting on there. Just a thought, but there is a big thing of sort of supply demand going on here. So I do know of somebody who actually did this in England during 2020, I believe, and they did not sound like they had some of the issues that I have run into or that I started to run up into. And I wonder if part of that is just because the site is more popular there. So maybe you do have more options. Whereas in my situation, I had to be pretty specific about the location because I do have to be within a driving distance of Denver to be able to do the other things in my life that I'm doing. So I didn't have as much flexibility there with location or with dates because I did need to line things up kind of in a row and that lack of flexibility definitely made things more difficult for me. That being said, I also saw a huge seasonal shift. So this is something important to talk about. Somebody commented on one of my videos and I felt kind of bad. They said kind of like, oh, I looked, but I couldn't really find anything. Well, they had posted this in, I wanna say December, maybe November. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, that sounds like the seasonal shift thing going on because I had a huge shift happen in the fall of me doing this compared to the summer. So in the summer, a lot of people were traveling, a lot of people were traveling for longer periods of time. So the, the house owners can also search for potential pet sitters. I had people reaching out to me, asking me to do this. Like I had people headhunting me basically to do this. Then, kind of around the time that people went back to school, there was a big shift that happened and all of a sudden I was applying to house sits and within three hours they would have like 10 applicants. Then I think trusted house sitters also changed the rules on this. So now they cap it at a certain number of applicants. But a lot of the time I would click on something, it says it's been posted less than 12 hours ago and all of a sudden it says, oh, there's already 10 to 12 applicants. No matter how much experience you have, like the odds that those 10 to 12 people who applied before me are all duds that they would still choose me, that it's gonna make it worth my time to apply and to reach out to them, probably slim at that point because there's a lot of other great people on this website already. And even though I do have a lot of reviews and a lot of positive feedback on my profile, it's just a lot of people to be up against then. So all of a sudden the supply demand completely shifted from people looking for me, making it very easy for me to be picky and for me to have options to me feeling kind of funneled into having no options, having to spend a lot more time applying and feeling like a little bit more crunched in a lot of these situations, if that makes sense. So that was a very long winded way to say, how hard is it to find a house sit on trusted house sitters? How hard is it to actually get booked for one? 
It really depends on your location, the time frame you're looking, how flexible you're willing to be with your dates, how flexible you're willing to be with your location, and then of course also your profile and things that are within your control. But there are a lot of things at play here that are way outside of your control that can make it a lot more difficult, even if your profile is stellar and you have amazing reviews. Next question is, do I ever have gaps between house sits and then what do I do with them? I do sometimes have gaps between my house sits, so there will be times where things don't line up perfectly, where if I can secure a longer one and then a longer one, there might be a few days in between. A lot of the time people leave like on a weekend and then like come back on a weekend, but sometimes they don't and they leave like on a Tuesday or Wednesday because it's cheaper to fly on those days if they do have flexibility there and then I'll end up with sort of an awkward gap. So there's been a couple different things I've done during that time. I've done crashing on people's couches, staying in people's guest rooms. This is where it really does help that I've now been in the Denver area for a while. So I actually do know people who have offered that up to me when they kind of find out what I'm doing and where that's worked really well at that point. But there's been other times where I've just tried to get a motel or I've gone camping or I do end up booking an Airbnb just to kind of bridge me over that time. There's also been a few times where I've taken a shorter house sit. So sometimes people will post a shorter house sit if they're just gone for a few days. And there's been times where that has lined up really well with the gaps that I already had in my schedule. And so I picked those up to fill in that time. Question four, am I more of a cat person or am I more of a dog person? I get asked this a lot when I get interviewed by people on Trusted House Sitters. I think it's kind of funny. Um, I did not grow up with pets at all. I never had dogs. I never had cats growing up. So I didn't really know the answer to this, honestly, probably until I started doing all this pet sitting. I mean, I did do some pet sitting before this last year, but just much more sporadic. And my answer is usually I'm neither. I've kind of decided that there are some dogs I like and there are other dogs I don't like. Just like there are some cats I like and some cats I don't like. There are some people I like and there's also people I don't like. So it's like, I don't really go by like, do I like all cats more than all dogs? No. Do I like all dogs more than all cats? No. I can't say that either one of those things are true. I really just look at it as a case by case basis, just like I look at people, try to keep it up with mind, get to know them, and then make a call on that particular pet if I actually like them or not. I've had some beautiful, great experiences with both cats and dogs, and I've also had some bad experiences with both. For example, a couple years ago, I was on a run. Somebody did not have their gate closed properly. Their two dogs ended up chasing me down the street. While I was pushing one of them off of me, the other one bit me, actually bit through my leggings, and I was bleeding. Meanwhile, the owner's just standing on the porch like, la da da, like, this is no big deal. I do not like those dogs. On the other hand, I have had times where I am hiking with dogs that I'm taking care of and the dogs are like clearly looking out for me, which I think is so cool. Like if they hear my foot slip a little bit, they'll turn back and be like, oh, is she okay? Like we're in sync. And, and that is like such a cool feeling to be like, we are cross species communicating right now. Like they are looking out for me. I'm looking out for them but we don't speak the same language. We're not even from the same species. That connection is something that I see a lot more of with dogs. So in that way, I do think dogs are awesome. On the other hand, I also love a chill cat because they are a lot more low maintenance and I don't always have the energy for a dog. So pros and cons to both. I really just try to go on a individual basis, judge each one for themselves and not make broad statements like all cats are better than all dogs. Question six is, is it weird for me to go into other people's houses? It was at the beginning. It definitely was at the beginning. And I'd be much more timid about just being like, oh, I wonder where the, you know, cooking pot is. Like, hmm, let me try this light switch gingerly. But then by like the fifth or sixth time or seventh time you're doing this, like once the people leave the house, I'm just like, I need to get my life going. I, I need to still get my stuff done. I need to get my food cooked. I need to figure out where things are. I need to figure out, you know, where's the router, set up the Wi-Fi so I can do my remote work during the week. I need to just get going with my life. So I'm just like, I'll, I'll open this cabinet. I'll look in this drawer. I will figure out how to set up this space for me as quickly as possible. The faster I can sort of get acclimatized to that house, the 
the more enjoyable my experience will be there most of the time, or at least the more smoothly my experience will go there at a time. There's really no time, and I really don't have the energy to be timid about going into other people's houses anymore. And actually, if you guys wanna hear a funny story, I did get this feedback from somebody who was a new friend in Denver. I went to their house and they were like, wow, like you really make yourself at home here. And I was like, what? I'm like, what do you mean? But it's like, okay, I literally went to their house and I just like started making coffee there basically. And they're like, whoa. Like, but to me, it's so natural to just like open all the cabinets, look for the coffee, look for the cups and just like figure out how the coffee machine works. Like I, I do that every couple weeks. That's my whole life. So then to be with somebody who I felt comfortable with I realized I just started to do some of those things naturally in somebody else's space, which I realized for them was really jarring because they were like, whoa, this girl's really making herself at home here. They were really nice about it, but it was an interesting feedback to get because I do usually consider myself a pretty polite person and that feedback felt really out of character. But when I really kind of stepped back and looked at it, I was like, oh, oh yeah, it kind of makes sense. Like I've, I've gotten really comfortable doing that. And I need to remember that not all situations are the same. Okay, I think that's all the questions I'm gonna answer for today. So here's some cute clips of animals, but I think I'm gonna be making a part two so I can tell you guys what the best and the worst parts are about using trusted house sitters. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell so you get notified when I post that video. And let me know if you guys have any experience with trusted house sitters. I love hearing from you guys in the comments down below and I do always respond to all of them. Anyways, I just wanna thank you so much for watching. Bye, YouTube.